began in 2011. We have had a special focus on a theme. Every festival likes to find themes, and we're no exception, but the theme that we decided to focus on, one of our, our most important themes, is heroes. In 2011, which was our very first festival, we focused on our World War II veterans. When we found a film at that time called Mother of Normandy, we, were, we had a full house of, of people, young and middle-aged, who came and were privileged to see a, a film about D-Day. Um, and just people who actually dropped, jumped that day into this particular town were reunited after so many years, 92 years old, 88 years old, 12 of them still surviving, reunited with the son of the mayor of the town into which they fell in Normandy that day, and who were, were helped that day. And they received a standing ovation. Just the most moving and amazing moment. We have made it possible since that time, we have made sure that our firefighters, our veterans, our police, our first responders, have easy access to any of our films, any of our events, any time. So we have had cadets from West Point come down. We've had our firefighters. How many of you here tonight are firefighters? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And we have done what we can in our own way to make this festival something that we should all be proud of and something where we honor people who are putting, as you saw in the film, people who are putting themselves on the line every single day. So uh, at this year's festival, we decided to do a special focus. Now we've been chasing this film, truth be told, we've been chasing this film for a, wa a long time. We are so, so happy. I know Jim Serpico has been working with us since we first um, found the film. So we are so happy, really happy, that we were able to finally, finally show this film. Um, Dennis Leary was the producer, and the co-producer was, is, Jim Serpico. So first we're going to do something. We have another special individual in this room. And I'm going to ask him to come up here. Some of you may know him because you saw him standing with former, governor, former mayor Rudy Giuliani um, after 9-11 and God knows how many other important people who always want to stand next to Mr. Lee ILB. Lee, would you join me? Now, Lee is a very charming man. And he's not really known for his charm because he represents a very serious, a very serious um, organization with a lot of serious and very important purpose. In the face of his own personal loss, he lost his son Jonathan, who was a firefighter during 9-11. Um, Lee IOP has generously supported the New York community by a staff. Oh, why am I telling him? Why don't you tell him? I'm not too sure what I'm supposed to tell you. Tell him what you do, Lee. Tell him what you, you know, do. Uh, being a retired firefighter, I, I, that's what I do. And I wish I could still do it. And there's a lot of friends in the audience that I've worked with, and, uh, paid volunteers, firefighters at both organizations. And I was a volunteer firefighter for 38 years, New York City for 26. So at the 9-11, uh, 343 good reasons that I had. I stay focused on what happened on 9-11 too. So many beautiful people. But my, my true love and my true love will always be the New York City Fire Department. Uh, my volunteer service, I, I absolutely loved it. But when it came to actual firefighting, like we saw in this great documentary, uh, it's in your blood and you just, you want to go, you want to be dirty. You don't want to be clean. And if you're clean, that means you didn't fight a fire that day. So uh, I went on to develop uh, with a, a very dear friend, Jennifer Adams. Uh, we put together the 9-11 uh, Tribute Center, which is located right across the street from the World Trade Center site. Uh, gives a voice to the, the people that 
lost their voices on 9-11, whether it was the Pentagon or Site 93 or the World Trade Center site back in 1993, the first attack. So we've, we've been open for eight years. We've had over 3.5 billion people come through. And they leave with, the, with many thoughts, but it has to be a positive thought. You know, I, I can't tell you I didn't hate it the 9-11. That would be foolish. I did. I absolutely did. My, my son was murdered there. Good friends were murdered there. Some of your friends, I'm certain, were murdered there. So we turned it around and we did positive work. And we want people to leave our tribute center with that same feeling that we can make a difference in this world by thinking positive. Watching this, you can see the positive thoughts of the firefighters. Right so that's what we did and uh, continue to do it. I hope that's what you were. <laughs>
beautiful. I mean, even the shot of his DVDs, you know, the, yeah. the movies that he watched. I mean, that's all the things that make you, draw you in. I was just so impressed. The silhouetted shots with the commissioner. I mean, just beautiful stuff. So I want to congratulate you. I really, really well that. done. Thank you. Yeah. I wonder if you can take us through, um, and we will be opening up to questions as well. So if you want to start thinking of things that you, that you saw. Um, bring us through technically how you went about filming this beautiful film. Um, the, we, we had two young filmmakers that approached Dennis and I. They, they were already embedded with this fire department for probably three months. Um, and the funny thing is when they went to the city and approached the city for permission to go into the firehouse, they talked about this specific firehouse as the house to go to, but they never approached the firehouse and never got back to the filmmakers. So one morning they decided to just show up. And, That's uh, a very good technique. I can tell you that as being a reporter. You show up, things get done. So that was very good, yes. And the firemen, women were like, what are you guys doing here? Um, and they said, we're going to make a documentary. No one told us about this. So they went and had a meeting, and they came back 20 minutes later and said, you know what? We trust you guys. Uh, Brent was from Detroit. We're going to give this a shot. And um, everybody became lifelong friends since then. It was a year and a half of filming. Um, we got contour cameras, which are like GoPros, attached to about 13 firefighters' helmets. Um, during the course of filming, 23 melted. Wow. Um, so, you know, the footage you see in there was actually filmed by firefighters. How did they feel being part of that process? Did they feel, were they okay with it? Yeah, I mean, as, as things went along, they, they, they became Hollywood. They, they wanted to be cameramen, they wanted to be producers and directors. They, 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 they. How did you pick and choose, I mean, I, I, dare I ask how many hours uh, a film you had? There's 1,000 hours of footage. Yeah. Um, we're actually working right now on, on cutting it down to a six to eight part television series. Okay. Um, and we've been in some conversations. I don't know if we'll ever see the light of day, but there are a lot more characters than you see in this film. There are uh, dozens of characters. And the hardest part, I'm sure, one of the hardest part is choosing what to show, who to show. Um, how did you decide your main characters then? How did that, how, did that just come from watching and sort of seeing them yeah. come out? You know, it, it, it's a long process. It's watching and coming through all that footage, uh, meeting with story editors and, and shaping and taking shots at shaping other stories from other characters that ultimately didn't get used in this movie, but there were countless days and hours spent shaping those stories that you didn't even see. Right. Yeah. Lee, your reaction to the film? The reaction is, um, it, it's a testament to what firefighters do every day, all over this beautiful country of ours, all over this beautiful world of ours. It, it shows the dedication, it, it shows the camaraderie, it shows the, the characters. And when you said characters, um, I think we're looking at characters as uh, the, the guys that put the pie in the guy's face. Every firehouse, every firehouse has these characters. They're great guys. Uh, they, they live together, but they show you their dedication, and that's far more important for you to take away with is what they have committed themselves to doing in a troubled city, and they continue to do it today. What I guess maybe sort of answer my question here: Is there a hope that people? I know we have a lot of firefighters in this room. We have people who are obviously connected to films like this. But what do you hope? Just anyone out there who sees the film you know, has no real um, connection to anything, what do, you, what do you hope they get out of it? That we don't take these men and women for granted. Um, and we don't take uh, our local service people for granted. And that our government doesn't take these people for granted. Because quite frankly, that's what's happening in the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Since we've finished filming this movie, uh, Dave Parnell, uh, charismatic lead character of this film who's retired, has no pension. The city is bankrupt and they pulled uh, his pension. Um, Doogie um, has a settlement, but it's not, not enough to live forever. Um, and he doesn't, they won't pay for his physical therapy. Um, so due to that, he's getting, he doesn't feel infections until it's way too late. 
and weeks go by, and, and I feel like, and we all feel, the city is taking that for granted. And, you know, it, it, it's a complicated issue, but, you know, when these people dedicate their lives and their fathers dedicate their lives, and um, they're starting to now question whether or not they should continue being involved in this. So it's going to get harder and harder for the city of Detroit to keep, keep the morale is as low as possible right now. But yeah, I love how you showed at least that one moment, that interlude of showing them happy. You know, I, yeah. I was wondering how the film was going to end. I really was. I was like, is this going to be the end? Because the end, but if you had the, the distance of the car, you know, the, yeah. the truck going going off in the distance. Yeah. The um, bottom line is they love what they do, and you right. alluded to that. They want to get dirty. They want to go in. They want to fight. 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 Okay. What did 9-11 show us? It showed the world what firefighters do every day. And the country poured out and said, thank you. All firefighters were treated with the utmost of respect. It didn't take long at all for the country to go right back and forgot about the firefighters. The frontline people that come out for you. I'm not disregarding the police department by any stretch of the imagination. But we've forgotten the firefighters. It shows it right here. They're laying them off. They're closing firehouses. Don't think that it's just Detroit. It's all over. The, the, the paid departments across our country have suffered horribly. In New York City is also part of that. Well, and yeah, and I think volunteer as well. I know there was a big push out here on Long Island to get younger people in because they need to have more people within the volunteer departments. So I don't know if you can speak to that uh, as you well. Know, also being a volunteer firefighter for so many years, the dedication of these men and women in the fire services is monumental. People, I don't think people realize that somewhere between uh, 75 to 80 percent of the firefighters in our beautiful country are volunteer firefighters. Volunteer firefighters. And you know what, they sacrifice their lives just like us paid guys sacrifice our lives. And to think that we've forgotten about them. And the sacrifices that were made, not just on 9-11, which was 343, but we've lost men and women in our country, I wish I had the number to tell you, hundreds since 9-11, hundreds since 9-11, doing what? Giving up themselves, you saw it here in this, Something like this needs to be shown over and over and over and over and over and over. Unfortunately, it's not. You know, we'll come up with these other movies, these spectacular. Anyhow, you get me preaching that I want to preach. It shows what our beautiful men and women do every single day, and that we've forgotten what they do every single day. And there's a perfect example right behind us. And I thank, I thank Jim for the work that they do bring that to light. And just remember, it's not just deep. Right. Well, I think it's important to point out, I was doing my research before I came here tonight, you donated $115,000, I believe, through the film to the Lurie Foundation? $115,000 in cash, $175,000 worth of equipment that uh, I think it was in May. <laughs> and you saw that scroll of names at the yes. end. I mean, we couldn't do it without everybody in the audience, without all the supporters. Kickstarter was huge. We had over 3,000 people donate individually on Kickstarter. Anywhere from $5 donations to 100, whatever Absolutely. people could do. Yeah. Right. And I think that was great that you, that yeah. you thanked everyone there. It's so rare we get, get to see that. That's so wonderful um, and amazing to show the, the power of you know, sites like Kickstarter. Um, anyone have any questions? Anything they want they uh, wanted to ask? Uh, sure. I think I can bring it up to you. How, how long did it take to film uh, the whole thing and then editing, like the, the length of time it took for shooting, editing, and final post-production? I'm just going to repeat the question because they asked me to because they're filming something here too. So how long did it take to do kind of this whole process to film, to edit, to finalize? It was a year and a half of filming. Um, Editing was probably six to seven months. There was there was a rush to to get it into. Uh, there was a deadline for another festival, um, but we continued to ship it after that. And and it's still going on. The office is still open, trying to take this one thousand hours worth of footage and uh, uh, use it for another purpose and continue to raise money. And we hope to go to Detroit every single year 
whether it's from this film or other things that come from this film, and continue to donate money every year. Yeah, because obviously there's a lot of work. I mean, it's a shame that what those what they're being put through is still there. Um, so you know, hopefully you can keep up the good fight there with that. Yes. Struck with the fact that our synagogue has raised money in ambulances for Israel, and I think that we should use some of the same methods to do something for our own country and for the cities that need it. Um, Detroit has such a—it's um, not just one problem, right? It's yeah. the pensions, it's the vacant homes, it's the unemployment, it's a city that's bankrupt. Uh, it's so many problems, and I think that we need organizations, uh, businesses, and some real advertising to come up with some uh, some equipment, more than just what you donated. Right. Yeah, I mean, we agree. Um, it's a very, very complicated issue. I will tell you that big business in Detroit, while we had some support, there were a lot of big companies that are based in Detroit that did not want to come close to this film because they felt being associated would shed light on how bad the situation in Detroit is. And nearby is Dearborn. Nearby yeah. are so many other cities that have so many Fortune 500 companies that we should be doing something. Like, you know, let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We've got an advocate right here. Uh, anyone else? Aside from the, the film, what the Lyric, I mean, I know the Lyric Firefighters Foundation has raised a lot of money kind of for the same causes. Can you talk about that for a little bit? Yeah. Um, we, uh, you know, some, some of the things we have been involved with was shown in the trailer. We uh, were involved in building the first, believe it or not, the first high rise simulator in New York until we got involved in that. There was none. Um, it's now operating on Randall's Island, and not only New York City trains, but uh, cities from all around the East Coast come to have trains. Um, right now, we're spending a lot of time and resources in uh, leadership education. So we've got some of the, the highest ranking fire chiefs in New York working with firefighters from Boston, Philadelphia, um, uh, and it's four cities at a time, six firefighters from each city, sharing techniques and coming up with a leadership program that hopefully becomes standard so that um, if, God forbid, there's some other situation, there, there's a protocol from the top down. Can you use any of this video for training? This video? Yeah. yeah. Any of the raw footage? Yeah. Yeah. We've and sometimes we get, sometimes when we cover fires and we're there extensively for a long period of time, sometimes we get calls from the individual departments asking us to have the footage for training purposes. So, which we never, it's our policy to not give out raw video, but of course we do that for yeah. our departments. So we give them at length everything that they want. I'm just yeah. curious. Uh, anyone else? I think, uh, yes. Is this film going to be released um, no. commercially? No. Um, it needs to be seen more than just... Well, like, what happened was, like we won the audience award at the Tribeca Film Festival, and we were approached by some distributors. But in movie accounting, the math just didn't work because we would have ended up with 10 cents on the dollar. So we, we call it bus and truck. We played um, well over 100 cities ourselves. We rented the theaters. We did one-nighters, kind of like toured like a concert. And we made way more money than we would have if we went to a distributor and was in more theaters. Um, and that's where the profit came from. So it's kind of run its course in theaters, to be honest. What about schools? Can you get into schools? Yes, absolutely. If we're, we're working on, on going out to school, to libraries. I mean, there'll be a life on this, this movie. It's on Netflix. Um, it was the number one independent film on iTunes for a long time. Um, so, you can see it, but in terms of theaters, it's run its course. Uh, what are, was there any reaction from Detroit when this came out? Detroit meeting, you know, the, the higher ups in Detroit when the movie first came out. Was there any reaction in local media? Did they, did they have any? Did it bring up any discussions? Yeah, um, 
the Let It Burn was, was a controversy, but I think that was a controversy even without the film. Um, people seem to really support the film and, and like it, but um, there's so many problems there that I would say it didn't even make a dent. <laughs> that, you know, they don't even have boots that don't have holes in it. That's how, how bad it is. And even with all the money you've been raising, I mean, it's only just a, because that's how large the problem is, I guess. And the other thing is we, we, we can't give the money to the city because it won't get to the fire department. So we contact the manufacturers directly, put the purchase order in on behalf of those fire departments to make sure it gets there. Mm -hmm. um, hey, what's, your re I mean, what's your reaction to hearing all this? This is a, another large American city going through this type of situation. We just listened to what Jim was saying about the Elderly Foundation. It's troubling, isn't it, that it is a city that is relying on the Elderly Foundation to support the fire partner. When you just said, first of all, to think that Detroit has failed, there's no big corporations, I, I, that's a dream. There are big corporations yeah. in Detroit that have billions of dollars. And to hear you say that they don't want to be involved, so we're going to just depend on the O'Leary Foundation? That makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. There should be a way to embarrass yeah, these well, companies. Well, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah. But what are you doing? I mean, you've showed this all over. And these companies are still there. The market has bounced back. I'm sure they're making millions on their millions. And they're not going to contribute to the Detroit Fire Department. So a guy can have a pension after 33 years yeah. as a dedicated firefighter. The higher-ups, these corporations in Detroit, should be ashamed right. of themselves. And, and we do speak up. Because we do have that ability. You've got a hand, you've got a piece of paper, you say, we watched this horrendous video that was so beautiful. And you should all be ashamed of yourself. And that would have to go to the government also within Detroit. From the mayor on down. Because they have voices and they should reach out to these so-called companies. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, John LaRocchia, yes. retired FDNY. I worked with Lee Sun for a while. Um, it was embarrassing to watch this. I mean, even with the FDNY, the older equipment that we had, very rarely did we not have another truck, no matter how big, to replace that one. That alone should embarrass these people. And what I was wondering, I mean, they had the trucks taped, they had their you know, boots taped, their equipment taped. Um, I really didn't see that in the FDNY that often. That, that, that's horrendous to see that the truck goes out of service, now you have this other truck, and this, this kid dies because they couldn't use the truck. Um, I, you didn't get any film here of the mayor. Did you attempt to interview them? I mean, the commissioner seemed to start to come around. In the beginning, he was, I'll take care of this. Then he kind of like, we got to work together because he saw the tough job. What about the mayor? Did you ever try to interview the mayor and get him? Yeah, they didn't want any part of it. They did not want any part of it. There's a new mayor since we filmed it, and we were working with the city to present the check and, and present the equipment, and we didn't get an answer from the mayor's office. And uh, you said you have to embarrass him. It was Dennis's idea. We just set the date, and we'd know he'd show up for the cameras, and sure enough, he was there morning of, and he was at the press conference. You guys are doing some good work. Thank you. Yeah. You can tell they have real advocates in you guys. Yes? So the slowdown in the economy that uh, Russia and Hong Great and Vigilant Fire Department, the slowdown that happened in that part of the country also affected just less than a tenth of a mile away in Canada, which is right next to Detroit. The population density in that part of Canada is very comparable to Detroit. Are they also suffering from similar issues with their fire service? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know a lot about what's going on there. We, we focus our efforts here in the States, so 
I'd be lying if I told you I knew all those details, but I do know one of the things about this movie for us, and you mentioned that too, this is a symbol for every city in America, and every city's going through this, and it's just to what degree. By no means am I recommending a Michael Morris approach to, to this type of problem, but they are right next door, less than a tenth final away. If they have no problems, maybe we can learn a few things from them. It may help us down the road. I agree. And Michael lives right there, so he's the man to do it. Let's send him in. I think the goal is to just get, and I know I'll be um, tweeting and Facebooking about this film later, you know, get people to watch it. It's an amazing film, and it's something, you know, I think every child should see, every adult should see, yeah. um, especially the children, so they grow up understanding that. Because if you have people who value this, then they will grow up and become the leaders who will understand that it's something that needs to be, needs to be valued, right? That's what yeah. I think. Uh, anyone else? Yes, sir. The commissioner is still on the job. He is not. Oh. He is not. Um, you know, by the end of his term, I, I really have to say that the firefighters ended up liking him. Um, I would not want to be in his shoes. It was really an impossible task. Um, he came across, at first, very arrogant, um, but he really was trying to do the right thing. Well, and I love how you showed the sacrifices he's made in his exactly. personal life. That made you feel a little bit for him. Seeing him alone in his office, cleaning his office, yeah. seeing him home alone at night, I mean, that made you feel like, okay, I mean, we don't know too much about his, his personal story, but he, obviously he's made some sacrifice to want to do this. And so that, would, again, it's just a credit to the filmmaking, you know, the, the, the connection that you, that you develop. Um, the new commissioner, do you know about him? Is he... He's, he's just got a, a really tough job. Yeah. Don't envy him. How are we doing on time? Should we pull out a little bit? Okay. All right. I think we're good. I think another, um, do we have another one? Yes. I was just wondering why you guys chose Detroit. I mean, Dennis is obviously very well known to the Boston area, to the Northeast. But besides the, obviously, the dog running rampant and all the houses that are going down. Obviously, Detroit's a city in, in turmoil. Is that what? kind of brought you guys to Detroit is that you felt like it was going to be a, uh, the, the perfect stopping grounds for this. And then another, another quick point to that is, as it relates to Detroit, you know, it's kind of sickening to see the fact that the government spent all this money giving G, saving GM, but they don't have the money to give to the firefighters to save the fire trucks. Right. So, I mean, you know. Well, on, on the first question, the credit uh, to choosing Detroit goes to the filmmakers Tom Putnam and Brent Sanchez. Um, they started this film uh, out of a love for a firefighter named Walter Harris, who died in the line of duty. And they were already filming three months. They chose the city. They approached us afterwards. We came in late to the party. Um, and we were just struck with their passion, which was in line with our mission. And um, we have joined forces. Uh, in terms of the government, that's a tough one. I mean, that, that, that comes into federal play versus local government, and um, I do personally believe that there should be federal assistance when it comes to this. Um, but again, that's not my expertise, but that's my feeling. Lee, any final thoughts? Final thought. I, I agree. It should be shown to uh, everyone. Uh, in the audience tonight, we have Chief Sweeney, who is Chief of Operations, New York City Fire Department. Probably the most important job there is for the New York City Fire Department, right? Uh, we, and I, I like to say we because I hate to think I'm retired. <laughs> I could fight a fire just as good today as I did back then. But that's what you're going to back then. No, but seriously, I was, before I came up here, I didn't want to say any former firefighters. I feel like it's something that you do and you always are. Do you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. You don't, that's you don't be fired when you're a city fire department. You just, they, they keep you in the shadows and something comes up, they say, can you give us a hand with this? Anyhow, <laughs> we, we get to see fire companies, fire departments that come to the New York City Fire Department training grounds. You mentioned the training grounds. Premier training grounds. You have to understand, and I don't, I don't think it was mentioned in the film, a 
fire truck responds to a fire, the paid departments. How many men are on that specific truck working? Right? In New York City, we ride heavy, would be the correct word, I guess. Uh, by heavy, I mean you're going to have a truck company that's going to have an officer and five men. That's six guys responding to a fire to help you. No place in the country has the manpower that we have responding to a fire. It speaks volumes about New York City and what we fought for. But how about the other country, the other cities that have paid the departments? There are some that ride with two and three men. Take away the chauffeur who has to hook up, you saw him hook up to the hydrant. We forgot what our firefighters did 13 years ago. And the many that have sacrificed their lives since. This is not new. This is horrible, but it's not new by any stretch. Uh, what can I say in its final words? Again, you have a voice. Speak up. Say something. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's, it's a, it was a privilege to be here. Uh, it, it showed very well what all beautiful guys and gals do every day. News. So happy to be with you and thank you again for having me here tonight. Thank you.